Welcome back to another episode of the Don't Overthink It podcast. My name is Brett James, and I'm joined by my co-host, Darian Chill Takes with me here today. Darian, what's going on, man? What is good, man? We're back. We missed last week, but, you know, we're here. I'm ready to pod, man. Yes, sir. Last week, we were going to be talking our predictions for the NBA playoffs. You know, if you guys don't follow us on our socials, I'll have those down in the comments below in the description if you're watching this on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or on Spotify as well. But if you've seen, you know, we both kind of gave our playoff predictions as well out on Twitter. I even did mine on YouTube as well. But the first round of the playoffs is still underway. We're only two games in with a lot of these series. So we're going to be talking about both the East and Western Conference today and then kind of rattling off some topics and some questions at the end that Darian's got for me here today. But we're going to start off today in the Eastern Conference. Probably the best matchup in the entire NBA playoffs is going to be with the Brooklyn Nets and the Boston Celtics. <laughs> today at the recording of this video is April 20th. So game two has not been played yet. You guys will be hearing this podcast on Friday. So... You know, we don't really know what's going to happen, but we're going to be talking about this series and giving our prediction for game two tonight. Darian, Boston's up one nothing, Crazy game-winning layup by Jason Tatum at the end of the game. I know I was going crazy watching that. Really excited to see what Boston's done and put together this season. Give me your thoughts on this series and kind of what you took away from game one and then now heading into game two. Uh, I mean, so far, I'm just looking at what happened last game. I mean, Kyrie was unbelievable. I think he gave you like 30 39. 39. 39. 39. And I know he gave you like 6 and 4 or something like that, right? Played phenomenal. But I think at the end, um, the biggest thing that stood out to me, like in the fourth quarter, and that, throughout, really throughout the whole game, KD wasn't on his A game, you know, which is pretty rare at times, but we've seen it before in the playoffs. Um, but, you know, Yudoka, uh, the game plan at the end was... We're just going to blitz Kyrie and, you know, make the others beat us. And KD wasn't hitting. You know, Goran Dragic wasn't, you know, hitting either. And then they had guys like Seth Curry and Bruce Brown that couldn't buy a shot either. Nope. So, um, defensively, no, actually offensively for the, 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 the Celtics at the end of the game, they were sputtering too. I mean, it was a lot of times they had some empty possessions, right? Yeah. I mean, during, the, during, during crunch time. They needed to work on that for sure. Uh, defensively, they were still sound, though, per usual. Um you know, shout out to Marcus Smart. He made a hell of a play. I don't know why Claxton and Bruce Brown closed out so hard on Marcus Smart. I mean, Marcus he was Smart. on fire that entire he, game, he, though. He, he was. He some big bucks in that first half. He was, but I'm living with him taking that three. Not even wide open, but contesting mm -hmm. like you're supposed to. Like how you're taught back in, like, grade school basketball. When you're supposed to break down, chop your feet, yeah. close out. Hands up. And Claxton's like... 6'10", six, 6'11", six, 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 right? Yeah. I mean, you can close out on that, right? You know, Marcus Smart isn't Seth, Steph Curry. So, if, and if you would have hit, you would live with it. Yeah. You know, like, I, I don't... Especially want, three seconds on yeah, the Yeah, I, I don't want Marcus Smart putting the ball on the ground, dribbling and creating for others. That's what he excels at. That's what, mm -hmm. he's, that's what he's been doing all season. And he found a cutting Jason Tatum and caught, you know, KD ball watching and lay up and exploit it. Yeah. So, if I'm Brooklyn, my takeaway from this game is, okay, well, it took them... A crazy finish to beat us. Yeah. Right? Kyrie played well. I know if I'm KD, if I come out there and I and I'm and I'm on my A game, we can still win this series. Right, we can win Game Two tonight in Boston. Um, you know, Kyrie with his you know fifty thousand dollar fine. You know, just I get they trying to match the energy and whatnot right there because he definitely played good. And I know he's fans. He's not a fan of Boston. Boston doesn't like him. But you still got to be able to hold your emotions in check, especially in the playoffs, man. Mm -hmm. um, especially in Boston. Yeah, especially, especially in Boston. Especially in Boston, just in the playoffs in general. But, you know, I can't speak for another man and what he mm -hmm. does. So, I mean, I, I get it. But, yeah. you know, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm Brooklyn, I'm not worried. But if I'm Boston, I'm, I'm happy because that could have been a game we easily lost. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Jason, Jason Tatum, he balled out as well, gave you 31 points. Marcus Smart played good. Al Horford played good, and you know it's just played phenomenal. Played, yeah. played very good. So, you know it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good series, man. Ben Simmons could possibly be coming back around game three, game four. Um, it, 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 regardless of in Boston or Brooklyn, I'm not really feeling comfortable either way, right? Because that one game, it took. I could have gone either it, way. It could have gone yeah. either way, right? So I, both teams. Are coming into this next game, it's still o o in their minds. Yeah, go out there and win game two, no matter who you are, Brooklyn or in Boston. So, so leading into game two, now that we're kind of here, give your prediction for tonight. Then, <sighs> man, it's Back tough. To the Boston Garden, it's, it's tough, man, because 
even if I am boss, I know how to say I'm not leaning any toward any any way, but I'm still confident because I just stole a yeah. game that I easily could have lost. You're right. So I think I think Brooklyn's gonna come out more on the edge. Um, they're gonna be, you know, KD is gonna come out firing, so will Kyrie. Um but if I'm Brooklyn, if I'm not Brooklyn, if I'm Boston, man, just play your game and you can be right back in a situation where last game, when it comes down to it, who's going to make the better decision, you know, and you've shown that you can do it so far. So tonight I like Brooklyn. Okay. I think they do win, but it wouldn't surprise me if the Boston Celtics come out there and just blow them out. Okay. Not, so you, not blow them out, but like win comfortably. I, I, yeah, you know, like, get, get a nice comfortable Yeah, win. like eight eight point win, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. Okay. <laughs> but so, I think I think Brooklyn wins tonight. Okay, you got Brooklyn winning the night. Before I actually get into my game, two thoughts. And like I said, you guys will obviously be hearing this a couple days later. But, you know, I'm giving my prediction now. My takeaways from game one was just Marcus Smart and Al Horford, just how, how much of a contribution those guys made. I remember when Al Horford was a huge integral integral part to Boston's success when they had Isaiah Thomas and that team with Jay Crowder and all of those guys, you know, really playing at the top of their game. You know, Al Horford really just wasn't a contributor in the NBA anymore when he went to OKC. There might have even been another stop that, you know, I can't think of off the top of my head. I think it was OKC. Philly. I think it, was it, it was Philly? It was Philly. Yeah, he had that huge contract from Philly. Um, that's when he was shipped off that four-year, $109 million deal um, to OKC. But I think he might have even gotten bought out, if I'm not mistaken. But It was. Al Horford, the last team was OKC. Yeah, because yeah, he was, you know, it was Philadelphia that had given that huge yeah. contract that they had eventually moved off of, right? So... Al Horford really just had a resurgence in his career. I love to see that coming back to Boston, kind of like where I guess it, I won't say all started, but he just had another leg up in his career because he was obviously a great player in Atlanta Mm -hmm. in those days. Marcus Smart really changed his game. And a couple years ago, maybe even last year, he would have taken that shot. Mm -hmm. The three seconds, he said, okay, I got the ball. I have a look. Let me take that shot. But he really changed his game to help elevate this team. And Udoka got these guys to buy into his system. So, I'm not surprised Boston won this game. I know they won at the very end of the game. I was going crazy because, I mean, how can you not for an exciting play like that, especially for a guy like Jason Tatum, who's a top 10 player in this game in my eyes. I think it's kind of undisputed at this point. But great game from Boston. Marcus Smart, just hell hell of a game. Al Horford, hell of a game. I will say, though, even though KD went 9-23 that game, you know, he's the least of my concerns. He's a top two player in this game. Kyrie, like we said earlier, went berserk. But heading into this game two, though, I'm going to take Boston to go up 2-0 in this series. And I don't see KD struggling yet again. I think KD's going to come out a lot more prepared because that's just the kind of guy that he is. Kyrie, I don't expect him to have a 39-point performance again, regardless if it's the fans rattling him or not. I got Boston coming out here, winning this game a little more comfortably. I don't think at the last second. I think probably by a margin of five to eight points, I think is a little bit more realistic this game. I think these guys really know how to get under Brooklyn's skin. I think that they're a lot tougher, more physical of a team. You saw that when they went on that huge run in the second quarter. I got Boston coming out, winning this game, going up 2-0 in this series. Just a very well-sounded team. Yeah. Uh, 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 The reason why I have Brooklyn winning at the end of the day, like I said, in in a close one, you just need guys like Seth Curry and Bruce Brown to step up, all right? Andre Andre Drummond has to get out of it. Can't be in foul trouble. Yeah, all right. I mean, you can't rely too heavily on Nick Nick Claxton. You know, I like him. He's cool, but Andre Drummond, you have to play better, right? Yeah. You're so brought for you. That's what I'm saying. You brought in to be that presence, that rim protector, right? You're you're a 15 and 12 type of guy. You know, you can easily do that, but you got to stay out of foul trouble. I do want to see more Patty Mills over Goran Dragic. Absolutely, it's not even a question. I, I mean, Patty Mills like. This this is this is where you make your bread and butter, right? You're a playoff type performer. We've seen it years prior in San Antonio. I know it's a different scheme, a different system, but you're a shot creator. Mm-hmm. You're a bucket. You know, I expect you to go out there and be that lead guard off the bench, but you've been in the flunk and your shot hasn't been falling lately, but still like Patty Mills, you gotta wake up because yeah. I think Patty Mills could be He's the X Factor when it comes to that Nets team. Yeah, uh, especially on the bench. Seth, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So <clears throat> I know defensively he's a liability, but I would rather see Patty Mills out there for being honest over there over Goran Dragic, even though Dragic has been playing bad, but still. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they just need they need shooters, man. They need the shooters to step up. Seth, Bruce Brown, even though he's not really a, a shooter, but he's more of like kind of like the the dirty work type of guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, gotta see some more out of Patty Mills and stuff like that. So and Drummond, so okay. the, essentially the role players, they gotta step up. 
No, they definitely do. Before we move on from this series and go on to the next one, quick question. Is Ben Simmons returning this series? Is he returning for the playoffs? I think he is. I don't. I think they're going to force him. <laughs> I think I think if they go down 0-2, I think you'll see him game three. All right, he's been moving on the court. I've been watching videos of him practicing. He looks he looks good, you know. I'm not asking Ben Simmons to be an all-star. Right. I know the last time we seen Ben Simmons, he was a shell. He was a liability on the court. I think he's mentally still there. But this dude is still a top five, top six point guard in the league when healthy and on his A game. He's the best defensive guard in his league. He's an all-star. I'll he's give you that, but he's a top wait, wait, six. Wait, wait, wait. On the record, Ben Simmons, as you quoted, is a top five, six point guard in the top game. Top five, top six point guard in the game. When healthy and on his A game. Yes. You so Ben Simmons had hit the top of his game. And I'm telling you, at the top of his game, we're talking Chris Paul, Steph Curry, Trey Young, John ja Morant, Luka mm-hmm. Doncic, Kyrie Irving. Those, those, he's, those he's, are five of his name? So you five, said Steph, six guys. Steph, Luka, Ja, ja Trey, Trey, Kyrie. Kyrie. Dame, too. Dame. So that's seven. He's top seven. No, bro. At no, six. But, but but you said top five to six. So I'm one of the. Just check you real top, quick. I wanna, I wanna top just seven. Check you top real quick, top ten. Okay, give no, me. Some, I got you. Top I got 10. you. I just wanted to clarify, <laughs> like that we're like on the same page. Top. I, I say he's seven, but top ten. I right? probably wouldn't give him top ten either at the top of his. You can't. But name, that's just my. But, yeah. That's you, just my. That's I got just my you. belief. I just don't. I just don't know how you can name ten guards better than Ben Simmons when he's healthy. But anyways, uh, he's he's a phenomenal player, man, and I think he'll be a difference maker in the series because. He can just basically be Marcus Smart without a jumper, right? I mean, he's going to defend. He's going to rebound. He's going to facilitate. He's going to run the floor and be that, you know, general. Kind of like, like a Draymond Green as well. Like, that's all you need from him. And I think he is well enough to do that. I'm not saying he's going to go out there and give you 20, but he's at least going to give you 8, 8, and 8. You know, and, those, and, that, and that plus they, minus. They need that 8, 8, and 8. They definitely do, bro. Minus. They plus minus because I'm yeah. pretty sure you give me 8, 8, and 8. You're playing good defense. You know, you can be a defensive stopper for someone like Tatum and Jalen Brown, all right? Give me a plus minus of like fifteen. Yeah, that's a difference maker, man. So. Okay, and like, and I'll I'll wrap that up, and I'll wrap wrap up this Ben Simmons talk real quick before we move on to the next series. Um, I don't believe he plays this series, regardless if they go down two zero, like I'm predicting. And if he does miraculously play this series, I, I don't feel comfortable with that why this guy has not played a single possession the entirety of this season regardless if it's you know not wanting to play in philly mental health issues which you know i take very seriously like a lot of people do back issues from sitting or whatever the hell may have happened getting himself back up in a basketball shape there you cannot throw a guy especially a guy who's not an offensive guy back into just playoff basketball it's hard enough just to get guys back into just basketball shape basketball rhythm especially when you're playing with two all-star caliber and superstar caliber guys in Kyrie and KD. I don't see that working. If he does, you're gonna he's going to look lethargic out there. He's going to look very lost. He's going to look like, okay, where's the chemistry? Where's the fluidity within this offense? You know, kind of what's my role? Am I an under-the-basket player? You know, how, how is this going to work? Because I'm not standing at the top of the key, right? I, I really think the pressure mentally and from the fans, even in Brooklyn, and oh my God, if he goes back to Boston... They are going to eat this man alive. I don't think he's physically there. I don't think he's mentally ready. I don't think you rush this guy back into playoff basketball, especially if you're down 2-0, because then th- that'll be the excuse when Brooklyn loses this series. That's just my two cents. One more Any thing. last thing? One more Any thing. last thoughts? He's been playing basketball all his life. All right? I mean, the game. Have we he's... seen LSU Ben Simmons once in the NBA? No, we have not. Huh? We've You've not seen, seen better. It. He's an all-star, Brett. Two time All Star. I'm like, not. No, he's, he's two like time, three time All Star. He's a three time All Star, two time All First Team defense. Yeah, bro. Like I'm this, not, I'm I mean, not, he's been playing basketball all his life. He, I have not seen. This is I like, have not this seen is like, LSU Ben Simmons. This is like you and I being like off our job like a whole year, right? Okay. We've been on a leave of absence. Absence, we, and right? We, and we come back. We're going to, okay. Oh, things will change a little bit, but I still have bit, the yeah. background knowledge of what I've of, done of in the, the past. Of what I need to do. Exactly. Okay. It's, 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 it's clockwork to me. He's be, he'll be fine, man. Like, he'll, uh, cardio, cardio was, all that, not cardio, but, you know, the, um, the stamina, 
the actual like you know uh mental side of things maybe but the stamina i get that right being out of shape i get that you'll be on a minute restriction I, I, I but we've seen I how it's the timid pressure of but, well, the anticipation of everything that's been leading but up every player we've seen come back off injury a star player has this is done an phenomenal anomaly though. this in, is an anomaly though this isn't just an injury this is like i am sitting out you are not i'm not playing here until you trade me you're going to trade me, and then I'm not going to play for this team until game three of the first round of the playoffs bro, because he's been all of a sudden basketball. I have an injury. He's been, it's not like he picked up the ball last year, bro. He's been playing basketball all his life. I get that. I'm it's, just, okay, it's my, second my nature to is, him. My belief is it's not going to work out. He's not coming back this series, and God forbid if he does, it's going to be a train wreck. Will he make some solid contributions? Yeah, of <laughs> course. But he's not going to be this difference maker that Brooklyn's expecting in Game 3 or whatever. All I got to say is you don't put so much time into this, time and hours into this, this this work you do, and you take a break for a year or so and change, bro, and you come back. It might be a little rough. It might be a little rusty, but you're going to find your way. Okay. And you're, it's going to be like still at the end of the day is natural. It's second, it's second nature to him. It's like walking. Him playing basketball is like us riding a bike. Yeah, I can get on a bike ten years later, and I'll still remember how to ride. You it. might, you, oh, you yeah, might, you know, bit, you know, yeah, it might shake yeah, a little yeah. bit, but like, bro, you're gonna be fine, <laughs> dog. So, not worried. That's about uh, it, I could, I could completely rebuttal that, but you know what, Boston and Brooklyn, it's gonna be a great series, regardless if uh, the sophomore, reigning sophomore, not reigning, but uh, former sophomore of the year. <laughs> Ben Simmons himself uh, returns to this lineup, which yeah. I don't believe he will. We'll go on to the next series in the Eastern Conference. Miami Heat and Atlanta, the Atlanta Hawks, almost of the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, Trey Young has been ice cold because, you know, heat melts ice. So that's what everyone's been saying on uh, Twitter. That's been the – he's been he's been playing really bad. But I'm not going to get on a Trey Young, man. He's still a superstar when it matters the most. And that's just my personal belief with it. But I want to hear your thoughts first and then – um, talk to me. So game, were, game two just happened last night. Yeah, and, they, and he played better. He had a career high of ten turnovers though in the playoffs. But you know he played better. They only lost by like ten. Jimmy mm-hmm. Butler went insane. Went dropped, out of the dropped, wire. dropped a forty-five piece. I mean, had him have a hell of a game. But I'm looking at Trey Young, man. This is why I tell people out there to pump the brakes with him being a, a, the best guard in the league or a top three guard because you. He's top, he's, five. Top, he's, he's top he's five. A, five. He's a transcending player, right? Led the, led the league in points and assists this season. He's going to be a remarkable talent in many years to come. He's going to be one of the faces of the point guards in like the next five years. I get that. But this is when you pump the brakes on him because now he's getting battle-tested. He's going against a physical team. He's even admitted that this team is physical to the oh, point. Oh, knew this by Miami. Yeah, he, but, he, but he said, I forget where he said it. I think he said it last night. He said they're, they're so physical to the point that the refs aren't calling it. I don't know how we're going to win. Bro. Like you go out there and play ball. Mm-hmm. I mean, like this is this happens in the postseason. Now, you've seen it last year. You had your run, you know, the Madison Square Garden thing against the Knicks. You beat the 76ers, and you were close to beating the Bucks. You yeah, know, you outside took them of the sixth, yeah, championship outside, team. yeah, outside of Middleton going crazy. But like this is playoff basketball. The spotlight is on you now. All this shimmying and 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 shim, you know, the ice trade thing. I, I love Trey Young, man. But this is what happens in the league. When you got guys out there that are, are are meant to guard you, you know their their goal. PJ and Jimmy. Yeah, PJ Jimmy. Uh, 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 Kyle, Struce. Kyle. Yeah, Struce, Kyle Lowry. Their job is to go out there and stop you from yeah. doing what you do. That's just playoff basketball, man. Like you, you got to be able to, especially when you got championship experience exactly, all over the Miami. Exactly, bro. Like these Kyle Lowry, he's a champion. Jimmy Butler, he's a, he's been in the finals. PJ Tucker, he's a champion. Yep. Eric Spolster is a champion. Two-time champ. Like, these guys yeah, know how to has. neutralize you and take you out the game plan. You got to find different ways, right? You know, no matter if it's... I know the team is depleted a little bit. Clint, Clint Capella's out. Yeah. John Collins hasn't played. I'm not sure. You know, you're not really good. You're really good contribution from your other guys and Kevin Huter yeah. and, and DeAndre Hunter and stuff like that. Daniil Gallinari, Gallinari. Is, he's playing good, but, like, yeah. Bogdan is not playing all that yeah. well. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's playing okay. And, you know, I, I get it. It's tough. But at the end of the day, you know, if you're as great as people say you are, and I believe right. you are, you got to go out there and perform better than what you're doing, man. First game, eight points. You know, shot terrible. Last night, 25 points, 10, or a career high in, um, in, um, a career high in turnovers, 10. Yeah, 10. So, like, it's bad basketball. On the flip side, real quick to the Heat, they're playing phenomenal. I thought they were struggle. They're not struggling. They kind of remind me of the Warriors out, out in the East. They're yeah. taking care of business. They're like one of the best teams in the playoffs right now. 
Jimmy Butler's hooping. Duncan Robinson is finally coming up, emerging. Strauss hitting big time shots. Kyle Lowry just being a, a nuisance, right? Bam out of bios, still kind of figuring himself out a little bit, but he'll figure he'll, he'll turn it around. I do want to see them get some more minutes to someone like Victor Oladipo. I think he's yet to register a minute. He's yet in the postseason, season, which is kind of weird to me. I think it had a bigger role, but he was coming back off injury too, though. So I think they're still easing him back. He, he played he tried, another regular he season. He dropped forty points like the, on the second, Magic. Yeah, on the, yeah, on the Magic. Trust yeah, me, I know. Trust yeah, me, I know. so I, I want to see some more minutes out of Victor, but Peter Tucker hitting big time shots. I mean, his team is they're poised and they're ready for a finals push. And you know, so unfortunate to the Hawks. I don't see them grabbing a game at all because without Clint Capella being yeah. that live threat and being a very uh, a good, a good uh, uh, assist, pick and roll partner, pick and roll partner with Trey Young. Young, one of the best pick and roll duos, like yeah, because, mobs. Exactly because when you get that pick and roll with Trey Young, like you can take advantage of someone like um, Bam Adebayo, even though he's right. a very good perimeter defender. Trey Young can cook that, right? Yeah. But when you got guys like you know Huter or DeAndre, you know, or other guys setting picks, when you're yeah. getting guys like Peter Tucker on you, Jimmy Butler. Kyle Lowry is not oh, easy. Oh, these guys, easy, yeah, and they're physical, man. So like, he's not he's not used to the physicality, man. They're showing. So yeah, they're top two defensive team. Yeah, but, they're 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 battling them, but they're, they're bumping and bruising them up, man. Yeah. So well, you had you just said uh, Heat and four. I before the series had the Hawks, or excuse me, the Heat and six. I thought the Hawks were, and this is obviously before Clint Capella went down too with that hamstring injury. Um, you know, I had the Hawks just getting two games because I believe in Trey Young, the playoff performer, um, and, I, and I don't want this series to be. A knock on Trey mm. Young. Um, it's, it's not necessarily. You know, yeah, and I just I just want to make that abundantly clear to anybody out there that um, will you know call him out for being a fraud or being overrated or not being this transcendent superstar. No, Trey Young is a top five point guard. He proved that last season in the playoffs, and he proved it again. Granted, they've had an immense amount of injuries this season. That's why they were a tenth seed, but they battled. Or excuse me, they were a nine seed, mm. but they battled their way up into the play in tournament. You know, big win, blowout win versus Charlotte. Then they go and beat the Cleveland Cavaliers after they blew a lead because of Trey Young, right? And then they're playing the number one team in the Eastern Conference, right? This isn't just, you know, any number one seed. Like, there was weeks at a time where you would go on Twitter, you would go on ESPN, and you would just consistently see this is the most overrated one seed like in the I NBA, was one of like them. yeah, and, and, and you were, and I'm, and I'm sitting here like, what are we talking about? They've yeah. been a model of consistency all year. Look at the championship pedigree they have. I know Kyle Lowry hasn't played up to quote unquote his standard. PJ Tucker was going berserk in game one, right? Jimmy Butler obviously gives you a 45 piece last night. Trey Young's been struggling. He went two of 23 from three in these last couple of like, mm, in the last two terrible, games, I guess. Boy, from God, three. Dang. Right, and we know this. And you alluded to it. Ten turnovers, right? <clears throat> but, I just there was just an immense amount of just Miami slander I saw everywhere, and even from a Magic fan, I was like, you know, I don't support the Heat, but like I'm gonna give them their damn respect because this is a damn good team, and they're not losing in the in the first round. I still have Philadelphia winning and advancing, going to the conference finals. I'll get into that in a little bit, just because I'm sticking with my pick. But Miami is a damn good team, and this team could still go to the conference finals. I don't got them beating Milwaukee, you know, but yeah, this is gonna be a great. I think these two games in Atlanta is still going to be talent. Miami's not going to sit here and blow them out of the waters. Atlanta in Atlanta is going to put up a fight. I think that they get one. I think they're going to lose the series now in five versus six because, like I said, I had picked them in six versus, you know, Miami before Capella had gone down. I got Atlanta winning game three. I think they're going to come out motivated. They're going to lose game four, losing Miami. It's just my yeah. thoughts on it. Game, I, I, I had the heat in five. Um, I said Trey Young at least get you one. He will. He'll get them one. Right. He'll so, get them a, but if they lose game three, it'll be over this weekend. Like, yeah, as that be, they'll be toast. Like, I definitely agree with that. I don't. I don't know how if. much the Hawks could do to win game four, man. Because the Heat, and I still feel the same way. I still feel like they're they're not a championship team. Mm-hmm. I think they're just taking advantage of a weaker a weaker con- a weaker uh, opponent, and they're going to face a a better opponent. How it stacks up in the East and the Seven Sixers, who Next round. who are a physical team. But they can also get to the free throw line we're about to talk about in a little bit yep. and just take you out your game plan off that rip itself. But I stand corrected. The Hawks, not the Hawks, but the Heat, are looking, like I said, like the, the second best team in the playoffs right now. I will yeah. not lie about that. They're I, looking very good. They're taking care of business. As and they from, should. And from what I see, they're, they're dominating. Yeah. So, and yeah. So, and, I, and I've said previously in the podcast that I don't, I haven't seen, I haven't seen, you know, Jimmy Butler perform well in the playoffs since the bubble. 
45 then, in game then, two. And he hit a clutch three at the very end of that step back. And Jimmy's out of three point shooter. He had four so. threes last game. Yep. He was, he was, I man, I watched the highlights, man. He was on it. He was yeah. energetic. He was firing. He was, he was passionate. I mean, this, I don't I watched, know. I, I guess it means more to him. I guess he's been hearing the noise too. You can tell it means a lot yeah. to him this series, this, this playoff run because. It, 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 Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say that, and I was telling you when we were having this conversation a couple weeks back about Miami, and you were like really hesitant with them, not a championship team. I was like, dude, I believe in Jimmy Butler. And you're like, what yeah. if, you know, what is Jimmy Butler sharing? I'm like, there's just, just Jimmy, there's something about Jimmy. Yeah. And I believe in him, and I believe in this team. And that's really why I've stuck with Miami this entire time. Yeah, I, I, I've, like I said, I've, I, he, it looks like he took a lot of those things that people said about the Miami Heat personal because Absolutely. he's playing with Stop. different energy right now, man. It's postseason, man. It, it, it means more. These games. Me a lot more, so yeah, he looks he look good, man. Absolutely. And before we transition over to the Milwaukee and Chicago series, man, shout out to FLTeams.com, uh, who I'm partnered and affiliated with, man. Uh, FLTeams.com. I got my shirt on right now, repping. I know a lot of you guys on the podcast can't see, but uh, we do professional and collegiate teams in the state of Florida, man. Uh, journals, articles, and blogs on the daily, man. So make sure you guys go check out FLTeams.com. But that leads us on to the Milwaukee Bucks and the Chicago Bulls. Game two, I believe, is tonight. Um, it is. It is tonight. Give our predictions <sighs> about that. Talk a little bit about it. But I want to hear your thoughts first. As always, go ahead. Uh, Milwaukee could have lost that game in game one. Uh, Chicago played well enough to win defensively. They could not just hit shots, bro. Zach Levine played bad. DeMar DeRozan played terrible. Then DeMar DeRozan went like two for 12 in the mid range, something like that, like the Martyr Frozen, like he just, just <laughs> those playoff demons, man. They he just can't shake them off, bro. Like I don't know what it is. He's getting the same open looks. They're hitting the they're hitting front iron, like you know they're banging off the glass. I'm like, God dang, bro. Like these are the same shots you're taking. Like LeBron's not. Standing across from you, I know, I know it's Giannis. I was about to say, why does Demar always have to get LeBron or Giannis in the bro? Playoff? Another polarizing so figure, you know. So you got to go against, but like he's always like the best player in the playoffs. Like, like bro, go like it's Demar. Like you got to figure this out, man. Like Kyle Lowry was able to get rid of his playoff demons. Yep, you got to get rid of yours too, man. Because you have you were in striking distance. Vucevic shot to you, man. You've been up and down all season, but you showed up that game. He did. And I don't know if you're going to be able to keep that up, but 24 and 17, I believe he had, something like that. Like, Off the top of my head, I can't remember. But I was watching the game, though. Hit two threes. I mean, he was he was cooking. Like, he was working. They're going to need man. that again. They're, they're going to need that the whole series if they want a chance. Um, you know, Zach Levine, in your first playoff debut, I know it's your first game. We've seen other guys play yes. in their playoff debut, and they play better. Jordan Poole, but, um, Tyrese Maxey, we get it, but I'm not. Yeah, um, but Zach Levine, you got to take smarter shots, man. Like, fade away threes. This isn't a regular season, man. You got to be more precise about what you're doing. This is a Bucks team. It's a championship team. No matter if the score is you're up three with three minutes left, they have championship DNA. They know how to close you out and get you up out of there, right, as we yeah. saw. Because you guys were in striking distance. You guys took the lead at one point. You guys couldn't capitalize on it. So, for Chicago, you know, you're looking at this well. No one thought it would win this series anyways, right? They thought it would get they think, swept. They think they, they got a chance now, especially tonight. Thought they'd get swept. Thought they'd get beaten five or whatever. You know what it takes to win. You know, the Milwaukee Bucks are still kind of like just lethargically pushing through, mm-hmm. right? I like how they've been doing all regular season. Chris Middleton didn't play good at all. You know, Giannis, you know, put out his points. But, you know, they're still missing – that third option to really make this championship run. If I'm, if I'm the Chicago Bulls, I'm feeling confident, man, and I think they can win tonight. Like, I really do. I you think the they do. Come out on top tonight. I think they grab game two. I think they come out and they just play with confidence, man. Like can't get discouraged. I mean, one point you were down like twenty three to nine. Got to come out, play better. Just, just, just come out the game in the first five minutes and not be down double digits. Mm-hmm. If you're down by three, head into the second quarter. You're good, yeah. but try not to get a, like down too big because you want this to be an uphill battle the whole game. You want to do that against a team like Giannis exactly, and Brooke Lopez, man. And you've yet to shown this year to beat a team with it. Like what? Well, yeah. they're, they're still like what? Uh, like zero and like twenty five against teams. I think they're like two and twenty three or something versus top four teams in the East and West. Yeah, bro. Something like, like and like I know Giannis has this this whole like winning streak over you guys. Giannis has yet, yet to lose to the Bulls and like. Almost like five years, something like that, bro. So, um, yeah, I, I think the Bulls grab it tonight, and they go back to uh, Chicago one-one. All right, I, 
that's a bold prediction. It is. You know, my, that's I, my boldest prediction of the podcast def- so far. Definitely. Um, I will say it's nice to see Chicago back in the playoffs. Um, never had any grudges against them. Plus, I love my boy Vucevic, you know, being the Magic fan that I am. Mm-hmm. So, I'm always support the boy. Um, I think Milwaukee, I think it's going to be a tight game at halftime. I think Milwaukee's second half is just going to come out steamroll mm-hmm. the Chicago Bulls. I just, I feel it. I see it. I'm envisioning it. Mm-hmm. Not really manifesting it, but I just kind of see that playing out the way it is tonight. I, I believe it's going to be a very tight game coming into the halftime, you know, probably within a one or two possession game. And then mm-hmm. Milwaukee's just going to come out and score like 42 in the third and then just put it away in the second, uh, excuse me, in the fourth quarter. Just one of those games I think Milwaukee takes this comfortably, um, goes up 2 nothing. I do think coming back to the Windy City, especially how much Chicago's been starving for having these playoffs back in, we turn. in Chicago, they're going to get a game in Chicago. And th- and they're they're talented enough to, obviously, you know, Lonzo Ball, that, that really sucks that they're not going to have him in the playoffs as well, too. But Levine will be good enough and DeMar will be good enough. One game in Chicago, maybe two if they get lucky, but... They'll be good enough in a game in Chicago to go out there and get a win. Um, but game two, and really just for this series, I got Milwaukee coming out and winning. I think I had originally picked Milwaukee to win this series in five. I'm going to stick with that. Um, and, yeah, I got Milwaukee winning the series in five. They're going to take home game two tonight as well. Yeah. The reason why I'm basing my game two pick off the Bulls is because I've said a, a few podcasts ago that DeMar DeRozan has played like a top five player this year and I still stand by that because he's been phenomenal Yeah, and we've argued back and forth we on have. this podcast about that but plenty. to really solidify that statement you have to go out here and win game two mm-hmm. gotta play better maybe not well winning. at least they can lose it like close but, but you they gotta, gotta be respectable come, yeah, you gotta come out there and show me what you've done this season because you show me good DeMar DeRozan Absolutely. dropping at 50 40 you know killing it in the mid range getting to the free throw line right being that difference maker I need to see that tonight, right? I need Levine to play like the second guy or the first, whatever he considers himself. He has to play better as well, right? I need at least 25 from him. I need 30 from DeMar tonight, mm. which sucks because if if, if, Le- if Levine and DeMar are doing that, Vucevic is going to give me like 15 or you're going to lose. Yeah. So, I mean, if all three can finally play together on one accord, on one string, I, I like them tonight. Okay. I really do. That is your boldest prediction for this pod. Yeah, it is. I, I like the Bulls tonight. I yeah. like Vucevic to give me 20, 20 and like 12. I like Marty to go for 30. I like Levine to give me 25, and okay. they're going to win tonight. Hey, I like that. I like the boldness. But well, that's going to transition us into the last playoff series in the Eastern Conference, the Philadelphia 76ers and Toronto Raptors. Joel Embiid, 31 points last night in a 76ers win at the Wells Fargo Center. Harden's been struggling. Not doing too well. He's only averaging, I think, 18 points in the last 10 games he's played. Philadelphia brought him here, traded a haul in order to bring him and let him be the second option to make a championship run. But Philly's, in my eyes, not going to win a championship if James Harden continues to play like this as the second fiddle. Give me your thoughts on the series. They're up 2-0. But moving forward and what's going on with Philadelphia, how much are you buying into this? See, I told you before when the trade officially happened, you were so pumped about it. And I told her, I said, James Harden never played in a team like this. Correct. <laughs> I don't know how he's going to operate. Okay. And we've seen it. He is just a hybrid point guard. Like, he cannot get to his spots. He cannot hit his shots. He's not as fast anymore. He's not either. as I don't know if it's – I think – they say he's healthy. I don't know if it's weight. He can't be that fat, I think it's bro. Hands, like, bro. There's, there's got to be something He's like toast. Lingering. His legs are toast, bro. Like, his hamstrings are toast. He's not quick anymore. Like his pad and step back gets the job done still, but I mean he's yeah. it's yeah it's, it's, that's it's, what it is, it's, bro. It's, it's step this back is, is not hitting the same anymore. I hate to say it, man, and you know we've seen it sometimes from players, right? But I think he's one of those great players that we're kind of seeing the decline of his play. So he's gonna fall off a cliff. I wouldn't say fall off a cliff. Okay, okay. But I think he is heading. When I say heading, yeah, to Russell Westbrook territory, not. Of being a, a brainless squirrel right. basketball player, I know player, what you're trying to say. But to level his degree, his points are not in, not like not oh the God. impactful. Right. Harden is killing us tonight. Right, you can have 18 points, but those 18 points don't hit the same as someone else's 18 like, points. The the impact in the context. Chris matters. Paul's 18 yeah. points hit matter. Yes, those they are hit huge. James Harden 18. Oh, we, you ain't do nothing. Yeah, I mean, you, you, literally, you, you, you score, but a like couple, this. But like, yeah, this is yeah. But that's, that's all not, we need. James Harden. I hate to say it, but. This is a trend for him. The playoffs, they're just too big for him at times. I don't know what it is. He's a great regular season player. You know, we've seen that he's one of the best scorers of our generation of this era of basketball. 
but we're starting to see a decline of him. You know, maybe things can change. But just going off the total series, right? Flipping it back to that, this is one of the most boring series I've watched so far. You know? Oh yeah, I wasn't I wasn't entertained after, especially after Scotty Barnes got hurt. I got so yeah. Sh- that hurt to, me watching yeah. that game. One. Shout out to Maxi going for thirty eight points. I love to see. It. I love that the youth of this league is so is so fun to watch, right? Because the league's in great hands. But this series is boring, man. I mean, I love Joel. <laughs> I really do, Keeping man. <laughs> but he's a lead. He's the free throw merchants are killing me, dog. Like the playoffs, I, and I and I see it from every other series. Refs are letting players play. Absolutely, the yeah. Warriors. Joe Joker just getting killed out there, right? Literally. Don't get me wrong. He is forcing his body into Draymond and the Looney and stuff like that. But he's not living at the line like Joel. He's taking a beating. I see. I see John Morant taking a beating. I see guys like DeAndre Ayton. I see guys that thrive off getting to the basket, like driving to the hole and stuff like that, creating in the post. They're taking a beating. When Joel gets touched, when he gets blown on, Pauls, he's at the free throw line, bro. Him and James throws his hands up every I don't like single that. time. I don't like that, and I and I think he's I think he's still the MVP in my opinion. But bro, this is the playoffs, dog. I know he's hooping. Don't get me wrong. I've seen him do turnaround jumpers on the baseline, he's, he's on the far thing. end, you know, in the corner. And f- crazy stuff, man. But, like, it's not fun to watch, man. And yeah. the Raptors can't do nothing about it. Because I would not be mad if the Raptors were getting those calls, too. But they're not. Pascal Siakam doing the same thing. Yeah, that's why he went over to Nick Nurse last night and told him, stop complaining. He's like, Joel Embiid had more free throw attempts than the entire 76ers. Or, excuse me, than the entire Raptors team. This it happens. He was thirty to twelve. Yeah, the bro, like, in team free throws. It's crazy how the league says they're going to change on how they call calls, but they're still going back to their old ways and certain for certain players. Yeah, absolutely. And I especially get it. A physical specimen like Joel. I get it. It's it's a hit or miss for big men, especially skilled ones, right? Either you're going to get the calls or you're not. You know, he's been getting them all season. Why stop now? So it's unfortunate. The Raptors. And the Raptors aren't really playing good basketball either. Now I know nah. when they get out in transition, they're they're trying to move the ball and stuff like that. The game obviously gets slowed down to you know calls being held at the opposite end. But Fred Van Vliet has been playing too good. You know Pascal has been playing too good. Either losing Scotty Barnes hurts because that's another guy on the floor that can facilitate, especially on defense, defend, yeah. rebound, and give you like fifteen to nineteen points a game. You know Gary Trent, OG, Gary Trent. I, I, I don't yeah, even think Gary Trent's focus. played. Yeah, if he, he has, has yeah. He, has he really? I think he was. I He's been he, playing, yeah. I thought he, I thought he missed game two because of an illness. But I, maybe I'm thinking of game one when I was watching the game because like I told you I don't think I actually watched game two. Now that no, I was watching game two. I didn't watch. I'm game almost two certain. All. I'm almost certain Gary Trent was out there. But I'll, Eight. I'll get my thoughts while you're pulling that up though. Oh, he I mean, did. Oh, he no, he played ten minutes with game two, and he. I, was gonna say, and he I left definitely saw him out there. Points. One more thing though. What's up? I was excited about this series because I thought it would be very entertaining. Like I said, it's been boring, and yeah. 76ers are going to win this, and probably unless uh, Toronto's a very great atmosphere playoff basketball, very good, yeah. So it could it could flip flop, you know. It could, but no Matisse Thybul that's going to make a difference. I mean, that kind of cancels out not Scott, no having Scotty Barnes out there, so kind of evens the playing field a little bit more. Yeah, but Fred and Pascal <laughs> and, and Gary Trent they got to play better. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, I had Philadelphia before the playoffs had even started. I had them going to the Eastern Conference Finals from the moment James Harden got traded. I'll go back to that point real quick. Um, James Harden has not played to the exceptional level to which I expect him to play. I'm not asking him to be Houston, Mike D'Antoni, 2016, James Harden. I'm asking him just to be somewhere kind of in the middle between that and what he's playing at right now. Right? If James Harden can give me an impactful 25, 26 points while also still facilitating seven to nine assists a game, I'd love that. Mm-hmm. I, that, that that's <clears throat> why Daryl Morey gave up an absolute haul to Steve Barks and the Brooklyn Nets in order to acquire him. He's a much better fit, I think, alongside Joel Embiid than Ben Simmons was, even if Ben Simmons is on the court. For sure. And I still believe James Harden is going to get it done, right? I'm not saying that Philly's going to mess around and win the chip. Are they constructed to go and compete for a championship? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. They should be competing with Milwaukee. They should be competing with Miami. Have I seen it out of James in these two playoff series, or excuse me, in these two games yet? No, I have not. Do I think that'll change at some point in these playoffs? Yes, I do. I'm still going to believe in James Harden right now. I'm not a stand, but I just have this belief. He's going to turn it around. Obviously, Tyrese Maxey, I mean, nothing else to say. I mean, just phenomenal. But I had Philly winning this series in six going into the series. Um, Hasn't been that entertaining of a series, like you said, either. Um, I did like the physicality. I did see out of Toronto, though, in the first half of the second game just because Joel Embiid was getting just hammered. 
if you saw like the pictures that you could like pull up on Twitter and stuff too, like, he was getting triple teamed. He's hitting the deck. I mean, Joel Embiid was getting just absolutely physical out there. But it's unfortunate but, they can't keep it up because right, the, and the he's gonna he's gonna go call. and get twenty free throw attempts a game, yeah. right? And I'm not gonna hate on it, you know, whatever. I guess it's a part of the game. Is it boring? Sure. Does he put up numbers? Yeah. Is he an MVP candidate? Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but I mean. I, Whatever it's it's not been that entertaining of a series compared to everything else we've seen. I'd say this one and the Miami series have been the two you know most boring ones, quote unquote, to watch. Um, I didn't. The only game I have not truly watched is Phoenix and Nola game two. That game was exciting. That last I night. that I did miss that Phoenix win, which is what we're about to get into just now. Um, but every other game I've at least watched the entire game, or at least like the first or second half. Yeah. Like I have sat down and watched basketball, and it's and it's been great. Yeah. You know. One more but, thing. What's uh, up? But just going back to the 76ers, like you said, and I agree with you 100%. If Harden, if he can figure it out, get back to being at 25, you know, and nine type of guy, then, you know, uh, you saw something? No, I, no I, you I, didn't. I thought you saw something about the break. No, 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 no. No big Twitter <laughs> news. It's Ian Rappaport, though. But. Um, but if he can get you that 25 and nine, then absolutely you have a chance. But if he's playing like this, bro, they have no shot at the, po- they have sh- no shot at the finals, man. That's just my opinion. So... No, definitely. No shot. Yeah, but we're going to transition into the Western Conference now. I just briefly mentioned it, and we're going to go into the Phoenix Suns and the New Orleans Pelicans. Phoenix just had a huge Game 2 loss at home to the New Orleans Pelicans, and Mm -hmm. Devin Booker went down with a hamstring injury. How big of a deal is this for Phoenix moving forward, and is Nola actually going to be able to, you know, really give Phoenix a run for their money heading into the series? Let me know your thoughts. Well, shout out to Devin Booker, right? He... Played phenomenal in that first half, right? 31 points. Is it the only game I haven't seen so far? Yeah. Crazy. Balled out. But the Pelicans, even with all that being held, they kept the game in striking distance. I've seen people say if Devin Booker would have played, they would have won. I'm not quite sure because going into halftime, like I said, Devin Booker dropped 31. But they're only down. They're only up by five. You know, so Pel- the Pelicans were doing something right, right? They were let, okay, fine. He, if he's going to beat us, let, let his man go for 60. I'm not about to let Chris Paul go off. I can't let Mikael Bridges go off. I can't let Crowder get get too amped up in Norton. Can't get Crowder more than one point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, two points. So, oh. <clears throat> thanks. I'm like, hey, he played well at all hey, last night. Hey, next, next, what, what does he get in game three? Three points? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, I mean... I mean, the Pelicans, I mean, shout out to them, bro. They were one, a 1-2. One shout two. out to Willie Green, man. Willie Green and Pelicans, man, they were 1-12 at one point during the season. Got into the play-in. Beating the, beat the Spurs. Beat the Lakers. I mean, the Lakers. Get, beat the Clippers on the road. Yeah. And they just stole game, too. Absolutely stole it. I mean, B.I., Brandon Ingram, big-time buckets. Larry Nance, big-time buckets. Jonas Valanciunas, C.J. McCollum. Uh, the uh, the point guard, the Puerto Rican guy, I forgot his name. Um, the one that be doing the little uh, oh, Al- Alvin Torres, yeah, Alvin, yeah, Alvin whatever, Torres, yeah, Alvin yeah. Torres, yeah, he yeah. A little sneaky little guy. Yeah. He he was hooping yeah. last night too, man. So and Tyler Murphy hitting big time shots. Shout I mean, out to Herb dude, Jones too, man. Herb Jones. I mean, this team is going. This is why I'm going down a rabbit hole. Not rabbit hole. I'm going down a whole rant right good, now. Good, go for it. If Zion has any chance of wanting to leave, like why you want to leave this, bro? This team. Especially that Cajun food, bro. New Orleans bro. hitting different, bro. <laughs> I love me some New Orleans bro, food, bro. Just why would you want to leave this? Like you can really fill in the Especially Larry. Really green, man. Yeah, you can really fill in Larry Nance role and be that twenty-seven point per game score. Like, yeah, this is this is a, a a very exciting team. I don't know if they're championship worthy. I don't know if they're Western Conference, but they can really. If you had Zion in this fold with Devin Booker being out, if I'm Phoenix, I'd be like, whoa. Yeah, well, I'd be I think, scared. I think Phoenix would be a definitely a little more hesitant. Um, yeah, if, if if they saw Zion across and I've said it before I, I think Zion's a bust and it's just strictly due to health issues I don't ever believe this guy will ever be fully healthy throughout the duration of a season yeah. that doesn't mean he can't come in and make an impact on the court and be an all-star right yeah. he, uh, that is but it's just how long am I going to be able to get Zion <clears throat> for right but I, I mean I can understand why Zion would still want to leave not because I don't think that there's a good foundation here in Phoenix they're clearly proving it right they brought in CJ to like hey maybe incentivize Zion a little bit more mm-hmm. we've seen the level of production he's had since coming from Portland Obviously, Brandon Ingram, phenomenal player coming over from that AD trade years back. They've got pieces, man. They really do. And that Valanciunas trade was fair even across yeah. the table yeah. with Steven Adams, Willie Green, Jackson Hayes never lived up to the pick he's that he was, but, but, but he's, he's played better. Yeah. You know? And yeah, Zion in this <clears throat> mold would definitely fit. But I would say the same thing about LaMelo, right? Both have are on a team that, you know, maybe isn't the market that they ideally want. They've got the good potential pieces around them. Right, but 
I don't know if Zion mentally wants to be in New Orleans. I don't have a problem with it, you know, but if we're just talking just strictly basketball, yeah, he shouldn't want to leave. If we're talking basketball, Lamella shouldn't want to leave. There's pieces in Charlotte, right? I would, I would more so understand why Lamella would want to leave rather than Zion. No, same, same, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, Melo, right? they're not going Miles, Miles could also, Miles could also he, be up and out of there. He's, he's leaving so. his office more than likely. Yeah, so I mean, Lamella's got maybe one, maybe two more years, but we're not going to get into the, yeah, the Hornets. I'm but, just, uh, I'm just kind of comparing yeah, because yeah, Zion sure, and Lamella sure, sure. are, you yeah. know. But going to the Phoenix Suns, right? I mean, they've had a full season of not having one other two best players playing at the same time. They missed Chris Paul out, or they missed Devin Booker due mm-hmm. to seven games with a hamstring injury, and I believe they won seven of those games without him being there. And we all know what happened at the All Star break. Devin yeah, Booker took over when Chris Paul was down. Missed and, eighteen, I think, straight games. Yeah, and they won. They went like sixteen and two or something like yeah. that. So. The Suns, they know how to win without Booker. You know, they've been there before. It's a little different come postseason because, you know, you're facing a team that has beat you without Devin Booker on the floor. And you look huh, you look weird out there, right? They didn't look good defensively. Uh, Monty Williams spoke about in the press game conference how they looked like one of the worst defensive. This is the first time he said that they looked absolutely lost and terrible in transition defense since being there as a Phoenix Suns coach. Yeah. So that's saying a lot. So... You know, you, you, I know there's a lot to ask for for Chris Paul, but you need a master class for him. Um, as crazy as it sounds, to beat the Pelicans because the Pelicans are just going off hype right now, man. They feel confident, right? It's still yeah, game a young, two. hungry team, man. They're not expecting to go win this And series. there's an argument you can make out there with Devin Booker not being on the floor. Brandon Ingram is the best player on the floor. Yeah, you can definitely, you can definitely make that argument. Yeah, so, you know, they're hyped. They're going back to New Orleans. Smoothie King is about to be jumping. There's their first playoff game since they lost to Golden State I believe in that series no I think they had a, a year after that against the Trailblazers with AD you're right they did they yeah. did yep, yes they did. no actually my bad they had another one with AD and DeMarcus Cousins that was the last time they went to the postseason. okay but it's probably been since 2017 2017 yeah. Yeah. it's been a while it's been a while yeah. so um they're gonna be hype they're ready man uh, we saw how energy energetic that crowd was against the Spurs yeah so I mean the Suns have been battle tested for sure. They've been in these tough environments. They're a finals team. They know what it takes to win and get to the next level. Don't lose that game three, man. You lose that Don't game three, that it game gets three very, Phoenix. very weird. Yeah, it gets weird, man, because a young scrappy team, man. They got nothing else to play for. They got nothing to nothing lose. Else. They, they got nothing to lose. They trying man. to ruin your season. Yeah, exactly. They're not, even about theirs. They're not trying to win a championship, bro. They're not trying to. They stand. know. They're just trying to. They're just trying to play spoiler. Yep, that's it. And it's been a while since we've seen one, but. We've seen in previous years, like the We Believe Warriors, we've seen the AC take down the number one team in the, um, Dallas. In the, in, yeah, in, in, in the uh, conference. So, not saying it's going to happen. Yeah. But, Phoenix, you got to win game three. You lose game three, it can get very weird because then you start wondering when is Devin Booker going to come back. When is Devin Booker? And then you want to rush him back. And then yeah, he's going to. Yep. So, and, and I think if game three is Friday, I don't see Devin Booker playing Friday. He looked very zoned out. They need to, they upset. need to rest him for as long as he yeah, needs. They to rest. looked very upset when Devin Book when Devin Book got hurt. He looked upset, like he looked zoned out. He looked out of it because he knew he he pulled his hamstring again, and it's actually the opposite hamstring It's the right one instead Oof. of the left one. So, um, mm-hmm. the last time he pulled a hamstring, or it, it, they say hamstring tightness. You know, like they like they like to mix yeah, words they up in the postseason. Yeah, yeah. So they make it seem like it's not as bad. Not as I'm bad. Pre- yeah. I'm pretty like, sure. Like Luca with the calf strain. Yeah, I'm pretty oh, sure. Su- all right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he might have pulled tweaked his hamstring. Something. He tweaked yeah, something. Because they, they he knew exactly what happened. Went straight to the training room. Got out like ten minutes later in, in street clothes, man. Yep. So it's unfortunate. You know, Chris Paul, I swear, it feels like he has, like, some type of, like, spell put on him, man. Cause every zero? Every single playoff <laughs> round, bro, since the Clipper days, something happens. Either he gets injured or a key player on the team gets or injured. Or Scott Foster's officiating. Or Scott Foster's officiating. It's, like, three things you can't avoid, just, man. Just, it's inevitable. And this Paul. season, it's his teammate. So, but Chris Paul's been there before. He knows what it takes. You're going to need some big contributions from DeAndre Ayton, uh, uh, Cam Johnson, uh, Larry, Larry, uh, 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 Landry Shamit, Mikael Bridges, Jay, Jay, Jay Crowder got to step up, man. You can't go out there and give me three points and combine. No, Jay Crowder games. slandered though, man. Yeah. Come on, that's my boy. You gotta, you but gotta give me, you gotta give me some points, man. Definitely. All right, let's go into Minnesota and Memphis now. Memphis getting a huge, huge, huge win in the Grindhouse. I don't know if it's the Grindhouse anymore, but I'm still gonna call it the Grindhouse. That's basically what this team is still to me. Um, over the Minnesota Timberwolves, Minnesota came in there and put down a lick. 
on those Memphis Grizzlies in Game 1. Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, those guys came out fired and ready to play. And Memphis responded. Tying the series up at 1-1, to heading into Minnesota now. What are your thoughts about Game 2 and also just really where the series is heading? Because I originally picked the Memphis Grizzlies to win this series in seven. That was my prediction. I, have, I, I think it's good looking that way. I, th- I have Grizzlies in six. Grizzlies in six still? Okay. Uh, game two, it kind of started out slow, man, but Taylor Jenkins shot to him, man. He got in that bag offensively and did something very simple. And, you know, the Timberwolves could not adjust. They took Steven Adams off the floor. They ran small ball or Brandon Clark being the big, and they and the Timberwolves were lost. Yeah. You know, John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies, they just too fast for him, man. That's a difference maker, man. You putting Cat out there to be in a small ball lineup, having to guard guys like Jaron Jackson, Brandon Clark, who are, you know, faster than Steven Adams, who's just not gonna sit there and be a uh, just a, a body in the paint. It's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be a little troublesome. So I mean, you know, uh I think Cat gave you like nineteen and like like fifteen and eleven last night, something like that. He didn't play his best, but you know, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a six games here. I, I still like Memphis, right? Memphis and six. For some reason, I don't know how. I never seen this before, bro. But the Memphis Grizzlies get better in the game when Jaw's not playing. I don't I don't know how that works, yeah. bro. Because they were on a huge run the second quarter when Jaw was on the bench, and that's how they were able to extend yeah. the lead like fifteen, and that's what they won by like twenty, I believe. So, um, yeah, I mean, um, the, the Timberwolves got to adjust to that, man, because it, it's kind of funny how something as simple as Stephen Adams not being on the floor. And the Grizzlies running small ball just kind of just confused what the whole game plan was. The Timberwolves and never, they were never able, never able to bounce back. So, my thoughts: I think Memphis is in. I wouldn't say full control now, but Memphis has the confidence mm-hmm. to match their win because they know the type of team that they're trying to be this season. Exactly. So you know, we saw the whole John Morant thing on social media. <laughs> I, I I like John a lot, man. But I do. You got to win this series, man, because you're talking a lot. He talking a whole talking a lot. whole lot, especially after he got hurt. Talking a lot. Uh, talking a lot. I know. Dropping Jordan memes, saying that it's one game. You know, come on, dog. He's the, got two playoff wins on his resume. Let's pump yeah. the brakes, Jaw. These pump new the kids brakes. different, man. You know, these, these oh, him and him, him, and, him and Anthony and, and Lamelo, bro. These guys be like they all age. You're age. You're 21 years old, man. Know, Y'all I different, know. bro. Like. I know. I mean, even I'm 24, but still, like, these, yeah. these new players, bro, like, they, they mad talking. Mad talking, bro. They that, talking. And I will say, though, with this series, like I said, you picked Minnesota. Excuse me. You picked Memphis to in win six, in six. Yeah. I picked Memphis to win in seven. I still think this goes seven. <clears throat> Great game one and game two. Watch both of them. What a just blowout in the second half, too. I mean, Minnesota had no offense. I mean, just zero offense. They were just chucking up shots. They, D'Angelo <laughs> Russell, pull up three. Anthony Edwards, pull up three. Vanderbilt. Pull up three. Like, no, there was no fluidity in this offense. But that's what they live by, right? That's right. It, it's it kind of like you got to. It, it didn't feel in rhythm, though. Yeah. You, it felt like just just doing it just to do it. You got to take it with what it comes with it because they're offensively, I think, they're a top five team. And some nice shots ain't going to fall. It ain't right. going to look pretty, right? We've seen it in years past with Houston and Golden State. When you're relying really, or, you know, really heavy on your jump shooting and stuff like that and hitting threes and hitting long range twos. The night's not hitting. It's gonna look very nasty. It's gonna look bad. So, yeah. but when you are hitting, it looks great. You look, you look unstoppable. So, yeah. yeah. But no, I mean, I mean, that's definitely been a thing with Minnesota consistently all year, right? We've seen them get better, and when they're playing at their game, they're a very good and competitive very young team. I do think that the series is still, like I said, going to go seven. I got them splitting on the road. Um, Memphis heading into Minnesota because I mean that atmosphere was just so electric for the it Clippers. Was. I can just imagine. What it's now going to be like, you know, playing in a legitimate playoff series. I think Memphis and Minnesota, both two young, scrappy teams. I know Memphis is a little more quote unquote proven this year. I'm still taking my Memphis in seven. I'm still sticking by that. But uh, Minnesota, man, I mean, I want a very good team. I want I want Minnesota to win, though. Uh, that would be nice to see Minnesota win the series because it would also stick with my narrative about yeah, Memphis being Yeah, and frog, I'm kind of leaning towards frogs. the narrative now. But like, not being yeah, frogs, they just talking too much, bro. It's like not when, even the talking, bro. I don't I, like I, when I, teams like, talking and they proved nothing. Did you, did you see Anthony Edwards in his interview with Malika Andrews on NBA Today with Richard Jefferson? Today? Or like, like, and I'm on, uh, on NBA not, Today. I think I saw... He was talking about like Anthony Edwards Jr., his dog. and It was like a little five-minute interview on YouTube you can yeah, look up, bro. I, I like, think I just, saw it. Bro, Anthony Edwards... Such a, all these young guys, man, they're just funny, bro. Yeah. They just, but they all talk, you know, yeah. like him, LaMelo, Memphis Trey, is talking, all of them, bro. bro. Like, Memphis, Memphis talking is like talking like they've been to the conference finals. Like, dog, like, what they have they won a champion. They're talking more than the Suns. And the hey, Suns were in the finals humble, last year. Humble yourselves. I think they're going to be humble, humble yourself. soon, bro. Bro, what if Minnesota goes and wins both home games? 
They have three. Oh, Memphis ain't coming Ooh, back on that. If Memphis go, I mean, if Minnesota if, if goes Minnesota back to Minnesota, go and take care of business, bro. Ooh, it's gonna be nasty, Mi- boy. Hey, bro, that jaw. I know my boy. Them jaw there has been brewing too. So <laughs> yeah. jaw, you better hey. win. I'll hate for you to be. Uh, <laughs> what, what's the excuse gonna be then? What's the excuse gonna be? Them jaw there has brewing, man. He's kind of setting himself up that way. So, he is. I mean, he is, but. He could back it up. He could back it up. But we'll go on to the next years. We'll be talking about your Golden State Warriors and my MVP, and Nikola Jokic and the Denver Ooh. Nuggets. Golden State came out on top. They're up 2-0 in this series. Steph Curry coming off the bench. He'll get himself back into Steph Curry form really, really sooner than later. But we got to see the death lineup, man. Oh, my God. Talk man. talk to me about the death lineup and Steph talk to Curry me about the series. Steph Curry coming off the bench, I mean, for Jordan Poole because of the minute restriction. But what a teammate, dog. Like, what what player out there? Even if he is banged up, bro, what player out there is coming off the bench? That's that that's a Steph Curry caliber. That is player. a Steph Curry. Russell Westbrook could never. But no, don't I ever, don't. But think, I don't ever put Russell Westbrook on the same yeah, pedestal. But I don't think Steph many Curry. players. I don't even think you and I would do that if we're like you know. At I've that seen stage. Donovan Mitchell come off the bench off minute restriction before. I've seen it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's brief. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's brief. But two games in a row taking in that the role, playoffs in the playoffs, not a regular season game yeah. in the playoffs taking that that role, dropping thirty four in game two. Man, I mean, I can go on a whole rant about the Warriors shout right now Curry, because man. shout out to the whole squad because I'm so impressed, man. Shout like, out to Dub Nation <clears throat> for real, bro. Shout I was, out to Dub Nation. if you heard me a month ago, man, I was so mad at this damn team. I was <laughs> mad at Steve Kerr because we weren't healthy, and I was like, bro, even with us not being healthy, I was like, this team can still be a, a championship team or even like a, a respectable team without Steph Curry being on the floor. But that's neither here nor there. We're moving on. We're you know on a seven game win streak now, dating back to the regular season. We're up two zero against the MVP. We're beating his ass, dog. The, the Nuggets, we're we're whipping them. We're like dancing on them and everything, bro. We having fun like we used to do back in the day. Um, Jordan Poole, amazing dog. He's been hooping. I mean, Steph, Clay, and Jordan Poole combined for eighty four points in game two. I mean, I don't know how you can stop that. Like, this is a championship level team, Western Conference Finals at least. I mean, I, I just don't. I know it's the Nuggets, bro, and I don't want to get too hyped up about it. I'm trying to stay mellow as possible because the Nuggets are not good. And I've been seeing it in two games now. You know, this team is not good. Shout out to Joker for leading these boys even postseason, but they'll lose to anybody, any team in the playoffs right now. They'll get whipped in four. I agree. Timberwolves beat them in four. The, 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 <laughs> every team you see in the West will beat their ass in four. Even the Pelicans might even get them a run for their money in seven-game series. I mean, they're just not like... You spitting? My bad. Oh, no, you, I thought, no, I thought like you, you said spit, I was spitting like not actually. spitting like that. No, you spitting. But I, they're just not good, man. I mean, they're a lottery team, you know. And the Joker hasn't been good himself either. Like it's not like he's going out there giving you like thirty. He's just been like Draymond, you know. It's 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 putting that defense Clamps. on him, man. I mean, he's still my MVP. He's still the MVP for, for for a degree because I mean, like it's just like the PER and the like analytical stuff, man. It doesn't matter now, bro. Like you got to go out there and get a bucket, you know. I don't even know if Jamal Murray and MPJ will be able to help this team because they're not constructed. They're not. This team isn't constructed to make runs in a postseason. Like I think Mike Malone, not even Mike Malone, but the general manager. I don't know who he is for the different Nuggets. I think they are. I just they're just not healthy. I don't. I think that they are. They, we've seen this team with how the competitive finals. the West is now. Like I don't see them beating any team with a pulse. Really, yeah. I really don't. Like even if they had Jamal Murray and MPJ, bro, like. They had guys like Monty Morris and Aaron Gordon, who Aaron Gordon is bad. Like he's not. But, but Aaron Gordon as a fourth option is okay. Okay, I can get with that. Maybe, but like Monty Morris is cool. They, Barton is cool. If but they like, want to package Michael Porter and Aaron Gordon and get like another like legitimate player, right? Like I'd be like, okay, maybe, okay, but. I, I think they just did a like this is just reflection how bad of a job they did building the team so. for I, joke the Joker I man. I mean like I disagree. When he when his money comes up, dog, he's gonna demand a house. He's gonna be the highest paid player in the league easily. Should be. He deserves it. He to should be. be. And if is Denver gonna be willing to pay it? I don't know, but I know some team will because he's come to Orlando. <laughs> come to Orlando. I hope he, I hope he gets some help. I hope they can get healthy, man, or 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 he can leave. He probably he's probably gonna stay because he's he's like a franchise type player. He's, he's also like most of these foreign guys don't care yeah. about all but that stuff. To the Warriors, I mean, I'm interested to see what happens in games three. Games one and two have been the de- dominant, you know, mm-hmm. phenomenal to watch. I've been excited, been hyped. Uh, game three is going to be interesting. It's in Ball Arena, you know, the high altitude. So, you know, the the whole playing with the shortness of breath is going to be a thing. You know, Denver's going to be rocking, you know. But I've seen Damian Lillard go in there and, and, and not miss a shot. 
and have literally ball, that was one of the craziest games have, I've ever watched even though they life. lost but have ball arena on the ropes so like double overtime all right so this warriors team they go out there and, and handle business man this is over in this weekend it's over in four i think i think it's over in four too um but it's it's just been it's man. just clearly golden state heading into the series should sweep them golden state just looking to sweep them. I'm glad. And yeah, no, they should be taking care of business. Regardless if they, even if Steve Kerr wants to just minute restrict Steph Curry the next two games, let's say Denver even gets their one, you know, moral victory win. Cool, good. Like yeah. I'm not sweating it. Yeah. You know, Golden I'll keep, State's I'll taking keep bringing them off the bench. Yeah. I mean, I really don't got much to say about that series just because of the fact that Golden State should be winning this series, yeah. and they are, and they're taking care of business. They surprised me. You I know? had I had Golden State winning in six because I'm just going off regular season performance because I saw us match up against them in the regular season. Right. Even without Draymond playing, we just couldn't beat them. Right. We would be up by double digits and blow the lead. Like, yeah, I had, I had Dubs winning in five originally. Um, I mean, Denver might mess around and you know get one lucky victory. They could take but game still, three more maybe if we're not hitting maybe. shots. But yeah, but I mean, I still honestly at this point. I mean, dubs and five, dubs and four. I mean, I think that's, we can agree to that. Yeah. I just want to uh, speak on the death line real quick. What's up? Um, Cause that was that was crazy to watch. I mean, uh, JJ Reddick spoke about it on uh, first take. You know, shot to him. He spoke about how this is like the third iteration of a Warriors championship level offense. Right? We saw it the first time with the seventy three and nine Warriors, right, or whatever the year prior when Steph won his first MVP with Harrison Barnes and Clay and and, and Steph. You know, and Draymond, of course. Then we saw David Lee. Don't forget my boy David Lee. David Lee. We Thank then you. we then we saw with the KD Warriors with Steph, Draymond, Clay, Iggy, Iggy um, KD being a small ball lineup. Now we're seeing it with Jordan Poole being infused mm-hmm. with these guys with the championship core and DNA. I mean, he has <clears> a different <throat> element to him. His game. He brings playmaking, being able to create on his own. It's like having, and I say this. Not trying to say that he is Steph Curry because I'm not saying that at all, mm-hmm. but it is like having another Steph Curry out there. Right, he's like the Walmart version of Steph Curry it, it, that it, happens to play with Steph Curry. Exactly, it's you. It's hard to game plan it. It's like yeah. like if, if Jamal Murray was playing in the system, it'd be the same thing. No, it, it's, he, it's, that's a perfect comparison. He's yeah. literally a Jamal Murray. It, yeah, it's hard to defend stuff like this, bro. Like if Jordan Poole was alone in in somewhere like uh the Pelicans, then you can neutralize it to a certain degree. Yeah, but you can't defend like this. an SGA also. Yeah, yeah, you can't defend it. It is hard, bro. You have two guys who can clip it. No, you have three guys that can shoot. Well, no, my bad. I would say you have two of the greatest shooters of all time. Yes, the greatest of shooter of all time, right? And Steph Curry. Now you bring in a third guy who is finding his own. He can create. He can play mid. He can shot create. Everything. He can hit the three from like half He's off the ball. He moves off the ball. Moves off the ball just just like stuff. I mean, this is scary stuff, man. And I can see why Mike Malone is having a a, a tough time coaching against this because we say all this. And then you have Steph Curry, like we said before this the segment began, coming off the bench and being and give you thirty four points. Like he's being this a six man. Right now, right? Then you have Draymond playmaking and quarterbacking offensively and defensively taking on a huge role. Then you have Wiggins, who out of nowhere can give you 25, right? Or give you eight. Eight, but he's been doing his role so far, man. He's giving you, I think, 16 and 13. Yeah, but that's all they need from him. All we need from Wiggins is to make it. We need him to be a Harrison Barnes. Just yeah. hit your open shots, which he's been doing. Yeah. Play defense, which he's been doing. And rebound, which he's been doing. Yeah. If you can, If you can do that. At a high level in the small ball lineup, bro, there is no team in the West that can beat us. There's no team probably in the NBA, maybe not even Milwaukee. I wouldn't say that. I will say if if Milwaukee's at the absolute top of their game, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, we Mil- Milwaukee plays at the top of their game. They're yes. the best team in the NBA. Exactly. There's no team in the West that can beat this team when I if, agree. if the Warriors are playing like this. Not Phoenix, not Utah, exactly. not Dallas, not nobody. 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 But out the East. I think there's a t- there's a few out Miami. there. Be, Miami, Miami, we beat Miami twice this year. I'm Miami not, gonna give you a run for your money. If that's if it, I don't it, even it, have Miami getting out, it'll of be East, it'll be Milwaukee and 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 Seven Sixers only because not even Brooklyn. I don't think maybe Brooklyn because they're, Joel they're two will be skills. A feast on y'all. Exactly because you can put Joel can can dominate. This is good in a small ball lineup. Yeah, because he, he's he's a he's a he's a big that can move. Yeah, like when we face. And I know I'm going on a rant, but if we face like the Memphis Grizzlies, you can't play Stephen Adams against us. We're gonna kill. If if we face um, the Phoenix Suns, you can't you can't put Joel not Joel you can't put Javel yeah, McGee. I was about to say yeah. You can put eight and I. Was Aiden's gonna definitely be other producer? Yeah, but you can't put Javel McGee in this in your in, yeah. your, in your bench lineup. Gobert's gonna have to get neutralized all the time. He's gonna be on an island, bro. Yeah, he is. That's that's not good. And it's not you're gonna have to put him on Draymond the entire exactly. time, which is fine. But then that's gonna leave Jordan Poole, Clay Thompson, the, the Steph Curry back door. Exactly. exactly. And so, I know Mike Conley and Bogdanovich and all those guys aren't yeah covering so, back door. 
it's it's hard to match against this team. The only the only way they can make uh, I'm not I don't, I'm not gonna say finals. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be humble. I'm gonna be realistic. Yeah, don't be a job. West, I'm not gonna don't be a job. I'm not gonna be a job. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be realistic, right? The only way we don't make it, and if we struggle to even get past the next round or even get to the Western Conference Finals and we lose, it's because we're not hitting shots. Yeah, simple. If we're not making shots, then yes, anybody can beat us. But if we're hitting, man, look out, boy. We might have a fourth ring coming back to the Bay. Hey, might be, but that'll move us on to then my Utah Jazz and the Dallas Mavericks. Utah had a big game two loss at American Airlines. I don't know if it's a re center. I think it's... American Airlines Center in Dallas. Because remember, it used to be the AAA and down in Miami. But yeah, Jalen Brunson dropped the 41 piece on my Jazz. And Donovan Mitchell, another 30 point <clears throat> game in the playoffs. I mean, just terrific. Um, not so much great down the stretch. I think he shot two of eight down in the fourth quarter, or maybe one of eight. I mean, you know, whatever. But Utah, I had winning this series in five. Obviously, I knew heading into the series, there was going to be no Luka Doncic. The consensus right now is that. Uh, Doncic is going to be a game time decision for games three and four. I'm still not worried, even as a Jazz fan. Yeah, does it suck that we had to lose in that fashion? And they had 19 contested three point shots that they made. That was an NBA postseason record. Contested? Uncontested. Excuse I was about me. To say, damn, me. that was splash. 19, <laughs> 19 uncontested three pointers Woo! in a postseason game made. That's an NBA postseason record. Dallas did their thing. I had Dallas at some point in this series going in, getting their one win because Utah is the better team. There's no Tim Hardaway. There's no Luka. Dallas is going to get their win. They're still a competitive team, right? Jason Kidd's still a good coach. Brunson is not a 41 type of guy. That's an anomaly, okay? Kleba, I think, hit eight threes on us. Gave me 28. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's not going to happen again, right? Are, are these guys going to still produce? Absolutely. Is Kleba going to produce? Is Brunson? Is Spencer Dinwiddie? Who hasn't played like Spencer Dinwiddie these first two games, but he's still good, right? Dorian Finney-Smith, Reggie Bullock, the list goes on. These guys are still going to come in there and produce. They're a good, scrappy team. Utah's the better team. Utah knows that they're the better team. I think they're even more battle-tested. I had Dallas, like I said, winning some game in this series. They were going to get their pity win. Utah's going to go home to Salt Lake City, games three and four tomorrow night. And they're just going to take care of business. They're going to win this series in five. Yeah, does it suck to lose? Of course it does. Do I want to lose? No. Um, but I still wholeheartedly believe, all jokes aside, Utah still wins the series in five. I'm not moving off that. Um, Quinn Slider does need to make an adjustment, though, um, in the fourth quarter because he had House in there instead of Royce. Well, he had Royce and House in there and took Mike Conley out. But we got to get Mike Conley back in here. But otherwise, Utah in five. That's that's all I have to say about that. Um, I'm not moved. Um, good job, Dallas. That's just my thoughts. Yeah. I mean, I had a tweet about it before the series even began. I said uh, the way the Jazz were playing this year about like just not being on the same page when it came to closing out games and how they should have been a lot better than what they the record shows. Right. I, I knew Spencer Dibbity and Jalen Brunskin can at least get you two games without Luka because they've done it this season, right? They're like I want to say they're nine and nine and thirteen without Luka this year, yeah. which is not too bad, right? Considering um, how what Luka does for that team. Exactly. Um now Jalen Brunson shot him, you know, you know Luka and Jalen got drafted in the same draft. They were? Jalen Brunson, he got drafted in the second round. Wow. Yeah. So I don't crazy. remember that. Uh, future LA Laker Jalen Brunson's playing, <laughs> but uh, he's, he's, about to, he's about to get paid this offseason though Jalen Brunson. But anyways, um, he's out of Dallas for sure. Um, but uh, shout out to Brunson man, gave you forty one points, big time buckets. Uh, you know, like if I'm Utah, I'm not worried, like you said, because you named a lot of things that are not going to happen in Game Three. You know, yeah, you're not getting a 41 piece out of Brunson. You're yeah. not getting eight threes made by Kleba. Yeah, you're, you're, there's you're, gonna be some adjustments, especially that crowd, man. Yeah, you better hope you don't give up 19 uncontested threes. That's a, that's shameful. But anyways, um, 19 uncontested made. Yeah, be my bad. 19 nah, uncontested. We, we made gotta put threes. that into yeah, its perspective. Made, made, made. So you can only think how many there were uncontested that didn't make it, right? So, anyways, uh, you know the Utah Jazz, they're just. Defensively on the perimeter, man, they're just not a good team, bro. I'm like you can kill me. them, like. And I don't, and I know if Rudy gets the blame of all jokes defensively because he does. But he's so not much. the problem with this. He's team. not a problem, bro. He's far now, from offensively. The he is a problem because they tried to feed him in the post. They tried to get the game going through him. He has zero post game. But 
Quinn Snyder, as a head coach, you know your person, you know your player. Why are you even putting Rudy Gobert in that position? Why is he not a lob threat? You know? He did drop two lobs um, in the game as well, too. He yeah. had two that went through his hands. That's cool so and everything like that. Conley threw him one, didn't didn't work out. Donovan threw him one, didn't work out. But he had another one that did go down. But, but that's sad, man. The yeah. dude only gets three tries. Like, come on, man. You got to keep feeding him. I, mean, I, know, I know during that game he had guys like Jalen Brunson sealed in the paint, dog. He is shooting a career high in free throw percentages. I think he's like 72. 70, he's at 70% this 70%. year. 70%. He's going to hit. That's very respectable he's, for a big man. Exactly. Like he's going to hit his free throws, bro. He, I think he had like under 14 points again. Yeah, he had eight points this game, bro. Like, it's... Anyways, but that's on that's on Utah. That's not on Don. That's not on. That's not really on Rudy. But yeah, it's on. not. But defensively, they are just they're bad, man. I mean, I I gotta ask you, is not having Joe Ingles show it? Um, no, help it. You know, no. I mean, this team? no. Coming from a guy who's watched eight years of Jazz basketball and seeing the way Joe Ingles contributes to this team, even when he was a starter, but obviously last season and yeah. and this season before he got traded and went down with injury, um, very solid and productive bench player, right? He is the primary ball handler. Yeah. And when he, Donovan and, 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 exactly. and Mike Conley are there, like he runs our pick and roll to a perfection with, with Rudy and when we had Derek Favors and then even Hassan Whiteside this year. Like Joe Ingles perfected that, right? It was the ball fake. It was the dime. It was the lob up top. It was the step back three. I mean, Joe Ingles yeah. just that's just has that with him. But but when I talk about this team this year, it doesn't it doesn't move it, the needle. It, it, it doesn't move the needle considering how much of an impact Hassan Whiteside's had on this team for a good reason, right? Like okay. it, it. Joe Ingles. I, I mean, does it suck not having Joe? Sure, but. This season's team is a lot different because we had Rudy Gay coming off the bench who hasn't posted a minute in the postseason yet. Um, Hernan Gomez, Hassan Whiteside. It's just a different feel to our bench this year than we've had in the pa- years past. Where we had guys like Thabo coming off the bench and um, you know Joe Johnson at one point. You know Derek Favors, whatever, right? Kyle yeah. Korver. This is different. So D- Joe Wingles doesn't move the needle this year's team because our bench is significantly different for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. So. No. Would it be nice? Yes, because I would like Jordan Clarkson or Trent Forrest to utilize that more, but um, that's not yeah. how our team is ran. That's not how Quinn Snyder runs <clears throat> the offense. So. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, going back to defensively, I mean, they just, man, they just, man, I don't know, dog. Like, I just see players just <clears throat> blowing past Donovan Mitchell, you know, blowing past guys like Bogdan or Bojan. I mean, I. Uh, Leaving Rudy Gobert to be able to de- have to, having to defend the paint and also drawing him into the paint, leaving wide open shooters out in the corner, no one's rotating, and you can see it's frustrating Rudy Gobert because like he's like, yeah. damn dog, like we're NBA players, bro, play some damn defense, like yeah. it's not that hard, like it's not hard to play sound team defense, it's really right. not, especially when you guys are you if know you just long, try athletic. to lock in, if you just exactly. try to lock in, Donovan Mitchell, I'm I'm seeing Brunson just blow right past him, yeah, like just not even playing, not even trying to step in front of him, yeah. You know what I'm saying, and I and I don't know if it's because he's giving so much on the offensive end. That's why I think he's, that's, I think he's that's tired and is. stuff like that. But you know they got to play better, man. They got to keep utilizing Mike Conley in the pick and roll game. You know Jordan Clarkson has to play better as well. I think mm-hmm. I think he and played he, okay last game. He, he had a much better game too. But I will say though the reason why Donovan was so I guess kind of burnt out at the end also, and I'm not excusing him completely. Because Mike Conley literally got benched in the second quarter oh, yeah. because he had three three fouls in the first half. Yeah. So, like within two minutes of the the second half beginning, he picked up his fourth foul, so he was benched for a significant amount of time. That's why he yeah, had little yeah. to no impact on the game. Yeah. Same thing, Jordan Clarkson, four fouls. Like yeah. then it was like damn, trouble. like we we just got into foul trouble, and then that domino affected in the Donovan having to do more. Jordan Clarkson played almost the entirety of the entire fourth quarter. Before he got benched for house at the end, and then they put Conley in, but he had no rhythm. Yeah, it, it just it just didn't work out. That's just a huge domino. That just goes back to playing not not good defense. Yeah. So, um, I I have I have the um the, the Utah Jazz in six six. Okay, I do want to say though about the Luca. I haven't talked about it yet. Uh, I talked about it off here, of course, but um, if Luca is they're, if they're trying to bring him back game three and game four, I think you're spelling trouble, man. Like, Same, you know. When I hear calf strain, I think anything around that Achilles area, man, are like, 
I don't. You just can't bring him back that quick, dog. You got to kind of ride it out and just take the punches and see what happens, man. I mean, it's unfortunate, but you got a franchise player. You don't want to risk superstar. him being a franchise superstar, all star, phenomenal talent. You know, top five player in the league. You can debate it with whoever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to have the chance of losing that next year. Yeah, because Dallas knows they're not going anywhere this year. Exactly. And even if Luka comes back, they could still lose this series. Exactly. So, you know, I think you got to take in caution. You know what I'm saying? Really look at how Luka's moving and see if he if he's not even like 80% of himself in no. game three, don't play him, don't, bro. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. this reminds me so much of KD when he got hurt. Now, KD was out for a longer time, and they actually listed as a, a partial... I think they listed it as calf strain. I don't know what they list, like listed it. tear or something. I don't know. Not a meniscus, but it was, they, it was something. They like said that. something was... I don't know if they said a, a, Keeley's, a partial Keeley's tear or something like that, but all I know is they ruled it as a calf strain yeah. or something like that. And you could see in the 2019 files when he pulled out for that jumper, when he tore it, you could see the you could yeah, see it move. Bro. Like the, you, when they zoomed in on it. Oh, it yeah, yeah. Bad. So you don't want to like, you know, make that worse, bro. So I think the Mavericks should be very cautious of how they move. Keep playing good basketball. Who knows, man? You can take this to seven games and, you know, in a seven-game series, bro, and it's game seven on your home floor. Who knows? You can win this series. Yeah. So, But I like I like the Jazz in six still, though. But. Yeah, and I like the Jazz in five, and it's not even just the bias. I, mean, <clears> I, just, I, I knew Dallas would get their win. Plus, Utah coming at home in that atmosphere, I think anyone who watches basketball will tell you that's the best home court advantage in basketball, not even a question. Yeah. Um, that place is going to be thumping. I expect Dallas to um, – go in there and lose both those games and then you know maybe they go win in Dallas but I expect the Jazz to go in there and take care of business but um, yeah anything else you kind of want to wrap up before we um, finish up this uh, I do have and questions it, to ask but up? on the pod right now um, just, uh, some Woj news what's up it says um, there's still an evaluation ongoing on an MRI results of Phoenix Suns all-star Devin Booker right hamstring but it appears Unlikely he'll be able to play game three and game four in New Orleans. Yep, but I, I'd rest him. Rest him yeah. up. So, you can't afford to lose a guy um, like that. Do I have any questions on here? Let's see. Yeah, we, we, we um, briefly talked about the Joker. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I want to talk merchants. about the Joker. Um, when it comes to the Joker, I know you already talked about, like, you're very you're very set on stone on this MVP, and I, and I agree with you. But, you know, what does this series really tell you about Nikola Jokic, right? I Absolutely mean, nothing. Nothing at all. Even him not, not even not playing well, thing. fouling out. Nope. You know, just being gassed after game one. It uh, honestly, like, no, like all jokes. Like it tells me nothing. He had no Jamal Murray these last two years in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. No Jamal Murray. That, 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 so, go ahead. And obviously now no no Michael Porter. Like I mean, what, what do you? What, if if I take Draymond Green off the Warriors for an entire playoff series, like we'll get one. I'm game. not gonna. Yeah, but I'm saying like you're not gonna see Steph Curry play. To the exceptional level of what Steph Curry's playing, right on a consistent night, and even Steph Curry's still going to do his thing, mm-hmm. but he's not going to be the Steph Curry that we're accustomed to seeing. Yeah, right. I just I can't take that. So I saw something the other day that kind of made me think a little bit, right? When it comes to like why Joker is getting this criticism because he's been getting so much love this all this whole off season, I mean, this whole season, right? Regular season, whatever. Right? He's going to get win the MVP again, and are they saying that the NBA? This is a point that with winning the MVP again, he's going to have criticism for not winning at least one game in the series. And they're trying to say this is why the MVP shouldn't go to a team that's ranked like this as a six seed or a seven seed because things like this can happen. No matter what the player is doing on a, a level of play when production, it comes to production, production yeah. when it comes to analytics, because stuff like this could happen. And he's the MVP of this league, but he's getting outperformed even Correct. by his own opponent, right? Now, if it's matchup and stuff like that. so. But if LeBron James wills that Lakers team to a six seed, they're giving him MVP. Am I wrong? Hey, but LeBron James isn't going out like this. Are we sure? I mean, I don't know. That Lakers team is bad. I mean, he, LeBron he took play-in. that 2018 Cavs team and threw a fourth seed to the finals. Okay, that's a completely different team than this Lakers team that, he's rocking with right now. Oh, those Lakers. Oh, so no, I think this. I think they give it to him, man. I really do. And that's I, not, you're making my point for me. No, but I think he. I think he performs better. I don't really know. If this Lakers team is playing cohesive basketball at like the Nuggets team where and they get the six seed. But I haven't seen them play cohesive basketball like once this season. But, but you just give me an LeBron example. LeBron would though. still do his... I'm just giving you a yeah. random, I'm just telling you a big name player. No, this this doesn't tell me anything because if the MVP is what it's been for our entire lives growing up, it's a regular season award. Who's the best player? It's not always about the best player on the best team because then that award would 
go to the best player on the best team every single year, mm-hmm. right? But if it's what the award says it is, then yeah, Jokic should be the MVP. Russell but, Westbrook should have been the MVP when he averaged triple double for the first time. So, since Oscar Robertson. So you think they should add a different award, no. like playoff MVP? No, that shouldn't be a thing. That's why you have the Finals MVP. The, the the playoff MVP is you willed your team to the finals and you won the finals. Yeah, I, none none of this like, <clears throat> hey, I'm LeBron James and I dropped 51 in game one of the finals, but I still lost. Yeah. So give me finals MVP. No, no, no. If you yeah. don't win the finals, you're not winning any finals MVP, no matter how well you played. I, I agree with that to a certain extent because um, like you said, I mean, it's it's hard for a, a regular season MVP to win a, a championship. That's like, yeah, that's two completely yeah, yeah, different things. It it really happens, right? I think the only players that do it I've been LeBron. I think Kawhi. Kareem. Oh wait no Kawhi's number one. He's not want to be LeBron, Kareem, Steph, Jordan, Magic, I'm pretty sure. And probably like I couldn't tell you the list off the top Wilt, of the Wilt Chamberlain, something like that. You know, but it hasn't really done been done in this era of basketball. Only LeBron right. and So probably Duncan never did it. Tim Duncan? Yeah I'm surprised he never did. I'm pretty sure he has. We'll but see, and this, I, have to, I don't know the list. Yeah, and the last head. ten years of basketball, only two yeah. have done it. And I believe it's only been LeBron and Steph. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, I I, I agree, man. I, yeah, it's just, it just I mean, it is so hard because I was getting. I didn't really get an argument, but I kind of made a statement on my page about like the big men's league and how like Joker looks gas and stuff like that. But this one dude got my comments. He was like, uh, "Well, I don't, I don't really care about all that. Like, I want to see him perform. Like, they did all this talking about him in the regular season." And I'm like, well, I mean, it's hard for a big man to carry a team. Especially because there's nobody like Joel, uh, Nikola Jokic in today's yeah. game. And even if it was Joel, like, it'll, if you won MVP, it's still yeah. hard for a big man. Not it's a, a not a Giannis. Driven, yeah, it's a guard-driven league. I'm talking about a legitimate, traditional big to carry. This isn't the 1990s or 80s yeah, anymore, no. right? It's hard, bro. So even if Joel in joker um struggle in the playoffs i'm not mad at them because bro nah. like these these dudes are like you know they're not they're not it's not you're not meant to be doing this yeah. in this, this era of basketball but moving on i want to talk about joel Embiid and the free throw merchants out there and james harden um free throw merchants you know i'm i'm, kinda, I'm not mad at joel because I, I love his game a lot man but this this series really really put an emphasis on this i mean how do you feel about that like because we, we've seen it like James Harden done it by himself with the Rockets. Right. Joel's done it with the 76ers in the past. But now we're seeing two guys Together. on the same team doing this. Like, what gives? Like, what's going to have to happen for, like, are the refs going to have to start being fair to both sides or to stop calling all these these on these files? I think so because we briefly talked about it earlier. And, you know, we you said how the NBA has put an emphasis on referees making different calls. You know, not trying to consistently have guys – at the free throw line because it changes up the pace of the game, the duration, but also um, just the excitement, especially in transition, right? And I know that doesn't really affect them. This is more so in the half court when we talk about the free throw merchants. Mm. But I don't really have a problem with it. Yeah, does it suck kind of as a fan like to see a guy go and shoot 25 free throw attempts? Yeah, it's, it's annoying because it's not a one game of thing. It, this is a reoccurring theme consistently when it comes to these guys and especially when we saw uh, Mike D'Antoni and James Harden in, in Houston. But... It's part of the game, but you know what this teaches me? Or I shouldn't say teach me. This should be teaching them is if they don't go and win a championship this year, then James Harden, how many times have you been this prolific scorer or now a second option and you've kind of been dependent on free throws? Yeah, it's a part of the game, but where's that gotten you? Same thing with Joel. This is the best season you've ever had. You're playing at an MVP level. You're willing your team right now to go and beat Toronto. You're going to move on and play Miami the next round. If you end up still being a free throw merchant and you know you don't advance, where did they get you? Yeah. Maybe maybe you have to adjust your game. I know you're getting the points. I know you're getting the production. Maybe the free throw line isn't exactly something you be, you should be searching for. So I don't got a problem with it. I think for the average fan, yeah, it sucks, but whatever. Yeah, I I just I just hate how like you just see it for one team because I understand why Denver Nuggets fans could be possibly mad at this because the Joker is the MVP and he doesn't get calls like that, right? Oh no, he but does not. At the same time. I I I respect it because not every time Joe not, not every time Draymond and Jokic are banging down low, you know it's a it. it's a foul call. Yeah, right. But I'm I've noticed every time I see Pascal Siakam or or uh, uh, what's the other guy's name? Um, the other uh, guy they had playing big with the uh, Toronto Raptors. Ken Birch. Not nah, Birch and his other one. Um, starts Chris something. Chris. I don't, oh, I'm losing my mind right now. Uh, well, yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, I can't the, think the right other now. guy. I mean, every time they see them bang down low, like oh, foul. Yeah, it's a foul call, bro. Same thing with Harden. Like, 
You know, every time he gets to the line, like he's still hooking people. You know, they're calling fouls when OG open uh, Ananobi. Uh, Ananobi is guarding him. So it's annoying. It definitely slows, slows down the game, and it gets the other the other team of the game plan. But they got to be disciplined. You know, no matter what, they can't let the free throws uh, get to them, get to them, and take them out the game plan. Um, moving on to the last question, I really have. I believe I had this my last question, but on um, mm-hmm. Donovan Mitchell, um, how do you feel about him during this playoff run? Like, do you think? If the if the Jazz hypothetically right, let's say they right. if they make it to the Western Conference Finals, let's say he, like he stays, what needs to be done to continue to build around his team? And let's say if they get knocked out this round or the next round, does mm-hmm. he leave? And he doesn't, or he does. Let's say they, if they if they get knocked out this round mm-hmm. or the second round, does he leave? Uh, I don't think. I think it depends the way we get knocked out, right? I think. First of all, I still don't see under any circumstance in us losing to Dallas. So I'll say the conference semifinals. Right? Mm-hmm. If we go and we lose next round, uh, who would we play? Phoenix, mm-hmm. right? And we take them to seven and we lose in like a heartbreaker. You know, I could see Donovan staying, right? And I still, he just signed a deal. I don't think Donovan hates being in Utah. I think that's all just a bunch of BS made up by Brian Windshorst and a lot of people that just want that it's narrative out there, right? And it is because Donovan has never given like, like, have you ever seen him heated on the sideline? Have you ever seen him, you know, giving off those kind of answers in, in outside press of the whole uh, now he's Gobert thing, right? Yeah, but they've, yeah. that's that's BS too because I know that they have a good relationship too, right? I'm not saying that they're best friends, right? But I know that they're not like button heads every time, yeah, right. That and and all this stuff about passing to Rudy and whatnot, like it, that's all just narrative driven, right? Sure, is it a stat? I get it, but you get my point. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it depends on the way we lose. Do I think we win the finals? No. Do I think that we can go to the conference finals? Yes. I don't really want to go there right now. I'm just living in the moment with what's going on. Um, Donovan has to understand, and I think he knows because he's a very intellectual guy. He's a part of the problem. And he's a, he's a, especially on the offensive end. Definitely is. He's a part of the problem in the last five minutes of the game. This is not just a one or two game thing. This has been this entire season. I've never seen Donovan so inefficient and so mindless mm-hmm. at the end of the game um, on a consistent, repeated basis. Is he still going to be the playoff performer? Absolutely. Is he still going to be 1A? Absolutely. He's still going to produce for me, and he's still going to be Spida Mitchell. The Jazz need that Spida Mitchell, but now it's up to Quinn Snyder to say, hey, in the last five minutes of the game, I need our offense to not be stagnant. I need us not an isolation ball, mm-hmm. right? I still need Bogey coming off these screens, hitting some threes. I still need Mike Conley driving to the hole, getting some rhythm in the first half so I'm confident in him going mm-hmm. into the end of the game where Donovan, I still need you to be you, but I don't need you iso ball the last five Hero minutes, ball. every single possession, right? Exactly. I still need the offense ran through. And if we get to the last minute or two, yeah, give it to Donovan. Mm-hmm. You know, if the play breaks down and there's seven seconds – Give it to Donovan Mitchell. Let him create. Mm-hmm. That I'm, I'm okay with that. And even if he breaks it or whatever, I can live with that. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, I still need some fluidity within this offense. That's my thing. I don't think Donovan's up and out of here, but that's really circumstantial on how things play out. It's not as black and white. Yeah, I, th- I think the media is really dri- driving this whole it's been like Rudy Gobert years. and Donovan Mitchell breakup. They I hate think each other. I think it's going to happen, though, after this offseason. I think it does. We'll unless we'll unless I'm in like a crazy run. Unless we go to the conference finals. Yeah, I, I think it – because, I mean, something's got to give, right? You we'll know, see. I think they should honestly move on from Rudy. You think they should move on – you think they should keep Rudy, if anything – but I, I still don't I still don't know how I feel about yeah, that. Yeah. I, it, that's so up in the air. All right, my last question. I've seen this on Twitter. It's been trending a little bit. What's up? Uh, this is one guy to go, right? You have Tyrese Maxey, Tyler Hero, Jordan Poole, Anthony Edwards. Yeah, I've been seeing that too. Um, I said that was pretty easy. Mm-hmm. You want to take a guess at who my guess is? Mm, is it Maxey or is it Hero? Maybe it's not one of those guys. Is it? Is it Poole? It's Hero. Oh, but it's definitely Heroes, Hero. It's definitely Tyler. And it's not a Heat thing. I just think Tyler Hero's not on the same level as a Tyrese Matt. Well, he's, I, I'd, say, I'd honestly put them on the same level. I think if you're talking tier and yeah. guards, I think Hero and Max are on the same level, but I give Max just a slight, 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 slight yeah. little edge over him. Um, but no, I mean, Poole and Ant. They're on a different level. Yeah. And but yeah, no. Tyler Hero's gotta go. Between those guys. I've been seeing, I definitely saw I've that. been seeing ones that have been saying uh Ant shouldn't even be on here because he's better than all these guys. I mean he is. He is, but like He's the transcendent superstar. He is for sure. He definitely is. I said sure. jo- I, I, we compared Jordan Poole earlier, like I said, he's like an SGA. He's like a Jamal Murray. 
He's a poor man, Steph Curry, but that's not a disrespectful thing. Yeah, yeah. You know? he, Jordan Poole's a phenomenal player, but he's not. you're not building a franchise around Jordan Poole. You're building a franchise around Ant, sure. Ja, all these but guys. But you never too. know, man. I mean, I, you know, we, we saw. He'd have to get up and out of Golden State. To, not be, necessarily. Be, yeah, I think Steph's at 34 years old, bro. I'm saying, but like, if Jordan Poole wants to be built around, he wouldn't have to. He can't be in Golden State. You're not, not building around Jordan. That's like saying I'm building around Mike Conley. I'm not building around Mike no, Conley. No, 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 no. That's different. Okay? I'm not building around Boyan Bogdanovich. He's a 20-point-per-game scorer. That's different. This dude is 22 years old. I get it, but... You can build around this guy. Okay, am I building around Cole Anthony? Kind of? Yeah. Jordan Poole's a little bit better, but, like, they're kind of <clears throat> on the same trajectory of a type of player... I think Jordan's better. I'm not. It yeah. Just you get my. Yeah, I get what point. you're saying. Yeah, I, yeah. I think. Uh, I don't know. I want to see one more year from Jordan Poole from start, to start yeah. lying like start, for start, like, all right, to start lying for real because then I'm hey, like Jordan Poole to Orlando. The, hey, what they say? They say the oh, uh, uh, what is what was the thing now? They say um about what? Steph. They be like uh. Oh man, the future is now. Something like that. Oh no, yeah, that thing. But it's also like the every time like Steph Curry beats LeBron, the, the meme always comes up. How many times will I have to teach you this lesson, old man? <laughs> From first one, Bob. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the future is now. Man, I, I think I think the it's gonna be interesting, man. I might start be man. That boy's pool is different. But I'm about to say, is, man, man, you might this might be like a, a second iteration of like late draft picks like coming out of nowhere because you saw the Joker. You know, yeah, be a second, second round, round pick. pick. I mean, he didn't even get announced on pick. TV. Yeah, you know? literally. Like, had a subway commercial when Joker got yeah. picked up. You know the Nuggets, quick little fact. You know They, they drafted him. The Nuggets drafted him. Right, but yeah. they also drafted Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. They did. Both of them. Yeah. Dude, imagine imagine if Donovan Mitchell and, and Jokic. Yeah. The I mean, Nuggets actually drafted a lot of good players. Yeah. They, you know, they drafted, well, I don't know if he's good, but when he's healthy, he's pretty respectful. Uh, Yusuf Nurkic. Oh, Nurkic is a respectable player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They drafted him too. They were, I didn't they, were they drafted him in the same draft. Yeah, but they, they really, they really be scouting. Be man. scouting, bro. They really be scouting, man. What the hell? Jamal Murray, MPJ. They, the thing is, but with Utah, and this is kind of where we'll end off. Is when Utah had their, uh, I don't know what their media days called, like when uh, scouts um, come and uh, whole private workouts with like players coming out of college and stuff too. Yeah, right. You know, they travel to a bunch of different teams. They go yeah, work yeah. out of their facilities. There was a report that it came out. This is way after Donovan had been drafted, right? That they had, they, like, after Donovan had left the building, they, like, all got together, like, in a room. They're like, you do no, like, they swore. Like, nobody says a single word about this workout and about what we saw today. They're like, there is no way this kid is not coming to Utah. Like, they, they by literally, by, like. By Mitchell? Yeah. Like, they, they, they were like, this guy's the next thing. Like, they, they just saw it and they, they literally. Like from all the reports, like got into a room and we're discussing, like, oh my god, like how does nobody know about this kid? Like this guy's the next thing and the second best player in the draft next to Tatum, you know. So I mean, that was just crazy looking back on it, you know, because no, I, even as a Jazz fan, like I was like Donovan Mitchell coming out of Louisville, I was like I know I heard the name, I'm like, but he's not like he came you know, out whatever, of nowhere, bro. Yeah, came out of nowhere. He was, but yeah, only, man. I think um... he's the only player. He's one of like three or four players in there. First five or six years to average twenty points per game every single year that they've yeah. been in the league. He's up there with like Michael, LeBron, and like Katie or yeah, it's something. It's kind of like uh, one more thing or well, two more things. Kind of like like I said about Luca and Jalen Brunson being in the same draft. The the Mavericks drafted terrible before those guys, and they found yeah. two like cornerstone players. But ain't no franchise gonna be worse than the Charlotte Hornets, man. They traded Kobe on draft night, so facts. Oh, and uh, they traded yeah they traded Kobe, but then. Portland also didn't take Katie. They took Greg Oden over him. Then they didn't take Jordan either. They took, they took uh, what's his That's, name? The I don't light, even the remember. Light too, skin yeah. guy in '84. Yeah, oh, yeah. Man. Broke Port, his knees. Port, Portland's in chip. Hey, speaking of Portland, I'll actually be in Portland in three weeks, bro. For real? Two weeks. Yeah, I'm gonna go visit some friends. So, so yeah, I have to. I got to. Too bad Portland's not in the playoffs, man. I have to pull up to a game, bro. Yeah. I definitely would. Why not? You know. Yeah. But hey, man, good potting today, bro. Hopefully, we get some good matchups. Um, continuing on in the first round of the playoffs, man. Thank you, guys. So much for tuning in to another episode of the Don't Overthink It Podcast, episode 11. We will catch you guys next week back still with the first round of the NBA playoffs. And like always, man, don't overthink it.